Welcome to section two of molecular biology. In this section, we'll be discussing DNA repair. Let's get started. There are two major categories of DNA repair, and these include single strand DNA repair and double strand DNA repair. Let's talk about single strand DNA repair first. There are three major types of single strand DNA repair you need to know for step one, and these include nucleotide excision repair, base excision repair, and mismatch repair. Nucleotide excision repair usually occurs in response to damage done by UV light, and this is associated with a disorder called xeroderma pigmentosum. Base excision repair usually occurs in response to damage done by carcinogens, so carcinogenic exposure. These could include nitrosamines in smoked food, tobacco in cigarettes, or arsenic, or other carcinogens. Mismatch repair is a backup repair mechanism for DNA replication and can be dysregulated by genetic defects such as Lynch syndrome. Let's talk about nucleotide excision repair first. This is a detailed figure of nucleotide excision repair which can be found in section two of molecular biology. This type of repair is responsible for repairing bulky DNA alterations such as pyrimidine dimers. Recall that thymine and cytosine are both pyrimidines in DNA. From the figure, you can see that there are two strands of DNA drawn, one on the top and a complementary strand on the bottom. Notice that two T's right here are shown together in a circle. This represents two thymine molecules bound to each other. In other words, this represents a pyrimidine dimer. As we just discussed, this usually occurs due to UV radiation. The cell can repair this bulky DNA alteration through several steps. Endonuclease enzymes remove the dimer. You can see in this image right here, that the dimer was removed. Next, DNA polymerase fills in the empty space. And finally, ligase seals the nicked region. Notice that the bottom strand of DNA now correctly shows one T paired with one A. The exact mechanism here isn't as important as remembering that this type of repair is associated with UV radiation and xeroderma pigmentosum. Xeroderma pigmentosum is a severe skin condition caused by a genetic defect of nucleotide excision repair. In this disorder, the endonuclease of nucleotide excision repair is often deficient. Okay, let's move on to base excision repair. This is a detailed figure of base excision repair which can be found in section two of molecular biology. This type of single strand DNA repair is responsible for repairing non-bulky DNA alterations. This includes deamination, depurination, and alkylation. More importantly, you should know that carcinogens can cause these non-bulky DNA alterations like we discussed earlier. In the figure, you can see a G with a circle around it, which represents an altered guanine in the top strand of DNA. The cell can repair the DNA alteration through several steps. First, a glycosylase enzyme recognizes and cleaves the altered base by removing the pyrimidine or purine ring off of the nucleotide. This results in an empty sugar phosphate region known as an apurinic or apyrimidinic site. Sometimes you may hear this referred to as an AP site. Notice from the figure that this is represented by the circled G right here, leaving the DNA. Next, endonuclease right here, cleaves the five prime end of the AP site and lyase removes the sugar phosphate region. Finally, DNA polymerase fills in the empty space with the correct sugar and it's sealed by ligase. Notice that the G now looks normal. This disorder isn't associated with a specific disorder, so examiners tend to test you on the mechanism of this type of repair more so than other DNA repair mechanisms. For this reason, I recommend that you spend more time memorizing the details of this particular mechanism. Okay, let's move on to mismatch repair. This is a detailed figure of mismatch repair, which can be found in section two of molecular biology. In eukaryotic cells, DNA is replicated and proofread by DNA polymerases. However, when this mechanism of repair fails, the mismatch repair system acts as a backup repair mechanism. Recall that guanine normally pairs with cytosine. However, in this figure, you can see that guanine is incorrectly paired with thymine. In other words, the bases are mismatched and the T must be replaced with a C, hence the name mismatch repair. During DNA replication, the daughter strand, which is represented right here in this figure, normally contains NICs, which you can see right here in the figure. These NICs distinguish it from the parent strand of DNA. Two proteins, mute S and mute L, can slide along the daughter strand until they find the NICed region. 
From here, they recruit an endonuclease enzyme to the site, which can then cleave the mismatched region of DNA. The gap region is stabilized with single-stranded DNA binding proteins, which you can see right here. Notice also that the space is now empty because the endonuclease degraded it. DNA polymerase can then fill in the empty space by moving in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Finally, ligase seals the nicked region and the DNA bases are now paired correctly. Remember, mismatch repair is defective in Lynch syndrome, which is also known as hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. The three mechanisms of DNA repair we just discussed were all types of single-strand DNA repair. Now we'll discuss double-strand DNA repair. There are two subtypes of double-strand DNA repair, and these include homologous end-joining and non-homologous end-joining. In homologous end-joining, the sister chromosome is used as a template to repair the double-stranded break. So imagine a chromosome right here. Now let's assume the cell is exposed to ionizing radiation and a double-stranded break occurs. Draw a little gap region right there to represent the break. In homologous end joining, the sister chromosome is used as a template which allows the broken region to be repaired. So we'll imagine that the sister chromosome comes next to it and allows the region to be repaired. In non-homologous end joining, proteins are used to fix the broken DNA strands rather than the sister chromosome. So the sister chromosome is not used as a template. This type of repair mechanism is more prone to cause errors, so increased risk of errors. You should also know that defects in this type of repair mechanism are associated with Fanconi anemia and ataxia telangiectasia. Fanconi anemia is a hereditary form of anemia that's commonly associated with aplastic anemia, and ataxia telangiectasia is a hereditary immunodeficiency that is also associated with spider angiomas and cerebellar defects. Okay, let's do some questions. A 53-year-old male presents with a two-month history of cough, fatigue, and weight loss. He endorses a 45-pack year smoking history. CT scan of the chest reveals an irregular mass near the inferior lobe of the right lung. Biopsy samples are obtained. Further analysis reveals malignant cells with heavily alkylated regions of DNA. What are the first three enzymes normally associated with repairing this type of damaged DNA? From the question stem, hopefully you notice that this patient has lung cancer, and the question stem also states that the DNA contains heavily alkylated regions. Remember, base excision repair is responsible for repairing non-bulky DNA alterations, which includes alkylation. Also recall that carcinogenic exposure, such as smoking, can cause these alterations. So the question is really asking, what are the first three enzymes involved in base excision repair? This is a detailed figure of base excision repair, and you can see that glycosylase, endonuclease, and lyase are the first three enzymes involved in this type of repair. Okay, let's do another question. A 40-year-old female presents with two months of bloody vaginal discharge. She states that her cycle normally occurs every 28 days and flow normally lasts three to four days. Two years ago, she had an ovarian malignancy surgically removed. The physician confirms a diagnosis of endometrial carcinoma. However, he suspects a genetic condition as the underlying cause and orders a fecal occult blood test which comes back positive. DNA analysis of malignant tissue would most likely reveal cytosine-rich regions of DNA pairing with what other bases? Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has ovarian, endometrial, and likely colon cancer based on the positive fecal occult blood test. This triad of malignancy should make you think of Lynch syndrome. Recall that Lynch syndrome is due to mutations of DNA mismatch repair genes. Normally, cytosine pairs with guanine, but a defect in the mismatch repair mechanism would result in cytosine abnormally pairing with adenine and thymine. So in answer to the question, the cytosine-rich regions in the malignant tissue would most likely be paired with adenine and thymine. 